Okay, what's up everyone? I'm here to give my thoughts and predictions on UFC 87, Seek and Destroy. They really gotta do something with these stupid names. I mean, Seek and Destroy, Breaking Point. I mean, what's it gonna be next? You know, UFC 97, The Warrior's Revenge. UFC 98, Territorial Takeover. UFC 99, Explosive Diarrhea. I, I, I like it when they just name the event after the main event. UFC 83, Sarah St. Pierre 2. Liddell Ortiz, Ortiz Shamrock, just name it after the main event. Sounds much better. You get the, you know, it's just getting really silly with these names. So, anyway, I'm looking forward to this card. It's got a couple of my favorite fighters. What I would put in like my top ten favorites. Those being Damian Maya and um, uh, Keith Herring. Um, so let's get right into it. Okay, first fight up: Jason McDonald versus Damian Maya. Uh, Jason McDonald's got good striking. Um, Okay strike, not not great striking, okay striking, um, good submissions, um, he's he's kind of tall and lanky, so he, he's definitely going to have a reach advantage, he's got the height advantage, um, Demian Maia, on the other hand, um, you guys got, I know he's only had two fights in the UFC, his total record 7-0, he's had two fights in the UFC, both fights, one by submission, not only one by submission, but one submission of the night, um, if you're not too familiar with him, before he got into MMA, he, he's like he's like one of the top Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners in the world. And before he got into MMA, he was like winning grappling tournaments left and right. This guy was racking up grappling tournament championships like like Britney Spears racks up tabloid magazine cover stories. And he's just amazing. This guy is amazing. Um, so you, you got to look into him a little bit. Uh, I think both of his UFC fights were undercards, so I'm sure they'll be on the DVDs. Um, but his his uh, last fight was very impressive. Very impressive victory over Ed Herman. Uh, I think it was UFC 83. Um, had him in a triangle, uh, spun him over into mount. He had, not only was he in mount, but he had a triangle on him and just started raining some punches down and. Uh, Ed Herman went. It was very, very impressive. Ed Herman went. I don't know if he went out from the strikes or I, I think it was more from the choke itself. But this this guy is a monster, a monster on the ground. And Jason McDonald, you know, Demian Maya is okay on the feet. He's got he's got good leg kicks, but he's not one of these guys who relies on on like one dimensional aspect of the game. He doesn't rely on his ground game, a la Matt Hughes. Uh, he, he doesn't rely on his ground game. You know, he's decent on the feet. Not great, but he's decent. Just like Jason McDonald, he's better on the ground. However, I don't think he's nearly as good as Demi and Maya. So, um, I think they're equal on the feet, um, and Maya definitely has an advantage on the ground. The only advantage Jason McDonald brings to this fight is that he's got more experience. And luckily for him, that also includes the experience of losing, because that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, I'm predicting a second round submission. Um, so next fight up, uh, Manny Gamburian versus Rob Emerson. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this, because I personally think Rob Emerson is a piece of shit as a human being. Um, he's got a record of 7-6, and six, so you know that indicates that he's really just average at best. Four, four of his six losses came at the very beginning of his career. Now, if I got into MMA and I lost my first four fights in a row, I would probably be thinking about looking into another profession at that point. But, you know, he stuck with it, and now he's huh, UFC 87 fighting uh, Manny Gambier, and who, you know, no matter what fight he's ever in, he's always going to have a huge uh, height disadvantage, Manny. Um, so I don't think that's going to matter against Rob Emerson, though. Uh, Manny Gambirian has decent submissions. I'm predicting him... I was going to say submission, but I'm going to say a decision. I think he's going to win a unanimous decision. Okay, next fight up, Brock Lesnar versus Heath Herring. And I don't know what Brock Lesnar is trying to prove, 
but you know, because I hear he picked, he hand picked Frank Mir for his last fight, and from what I understand, he picked uh, Heath Herring for this one, uh, which I don't understand at all. I mean, you know, I I don't know if he's trying to purposely humiliate himself or or what, but you know, you think the guy would want to get his feet wet before diving into the deep end, but yeah, that's the way he's doing it. Um, you know, the the one thing that he does have that you know almost every well-rounded mixed martial artist has is a solid amateur wrestling background. I mean, very, very few well-rounded, um, top-tier mixed martial artists do not have a wrestling background. Most do not. Um, the, you know, the major exception, of course, being George St. Pierre, who, uh, who didn't get in, who never wrestled in school. He, he only started wrestling when, when he got into MMA. So, of course, you know, for every rule there's an exception, and, and he's that one. But, you know, so Brock Lesnar brings the base in. Unfortunately, from what we know of his combined, what, three or four minutes of, uh, of uh, uh, MMA experience thus far, is that he relies a little too much on his wrestling ex uh, background, which is not not going to win a fight. You're, you're not going to win a fight by, by, you know, holding someone's shoulders down. Um, so, I, I mean... I don't see him ground, uh, getting the ground, the ground and pound on Heath Herring in this. Heath Herring, um, you know, unfortunately for Brock Lesnar, he's probably going to take it to the ground, which is great for Heath Herring because he's great on the ground. Most of his wins are by submission. He's got a great ground and pound. He's aggressive, um, and you know, if if Brock Lesnar decides to stand, Heath Herring will stand and bang with you. He's he's good on the feet. Um, he's been in with the best. He's got a load of experience. Um, I just think Brock Lesnar is completely outmatched in this, and I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Though I'm going to say he will make it out of the first round. I'm going to I'm going to predict Heath Herring uh, by a second round submission. Okay, next fight of the night: Kenny Florian versus Roger Huerta. Um, Kenny Florian, um, think about his last eight fights. He's only lost once, and that was to Sean Shirk. So, uh, which, you know, he really bloodied up Shirk with one of his uh, signature elbows. Um, so, Kenny Florian, uh, he's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Uh, he's a good striker and he's got those nasty, nasty elbows. Um, Roger Huerta, I think his record's like 25 and 1. And his only loss was at one of those, you know, one day tournaments. I think it was Super Brawl 36. Um, it was his third fight of the night. He verbally submitted with a broken jaw. Um, uh, other than that, I mean, he's very aggressive. Um, he's got excellent, excellent cardio. You know, uh, which, which he's got cardio that like better than like a Tyson Griffin or something. You know, I mean, you know, if it goes into the third round, his opponent better be on top of their cardio game, or they're just they're just going to completely get uh, overwhelmed. Because he's coming out in the third round just like he came out in the first round. He's just just a monster on cardio. Um, yeah, he's he, he'll he loves he'll stand and strike. He's very aggressive. Um, and I think it was it when he fought. This was like unprecedented uh, when he fought um, Alberto Crane. Can't remember which UFC it was. Uh, I think it was like UFC. 73 stacked and loaded um, but he actually Alberto Crane gassed he completely gassed he was just holding on for his dear life somehow he got Roger Huerta's back and he was just like holding on for dear life and and Roger Huerta was actually looking up at the big screen to see where Alberto Crane was behind him he was up looking at the big screen throwing elbows which was it, I mean it was one of the funnier moments in uh, UFC um, so th this guy is very tactical, very crafty. Um, he's just a monster. Um, he's got a very, very bright future, and I think he's going to bring uh, some big, big problems into the octagon for Kenny Florian. Um, but you know, Kenny Florian doesn't give up. He he's not going to give up. Uh, he's relentless himself, and I, I see this going to a decision. I think. Huerta is probably going to take a, a split decision, but it, I think this is going to be a great fight. It's going to be a close fight. It's going to be a, a just. It could be fight of the night. Um, so I, I'm going to say Roger Huerta by uh, um, uh, split decision.